Hello and welcome to your weekly roundup of all the latest news and ramble about the world of electric cars from the team at electrifying.com. This week, we are chatting about the Dacia Spring otherwise known as the UK's cheapest new electric car, um, the faster Volkswagens that definitely are not GTIs, and yet another Chinese brand with plans for the UK. And of course, we will be answering your electric car questions and dipping into the post bag to find out your views on everything electric. Welcome to the Kilowatt Half Hour. I'm Ginny. I'm Tom. And I'm Mike. Oh, and you were on your own last week, weren't you? We oh, didn't, have, didn't have any of the girls with you. We, we coped, didn't we, Mike? We bumbled through. Did. We did. We did, yeah. We managed just about. Your podcast did frustratingly brilliant numbers. <laughs> so maybe maybe our listeners are trying to tell us something because it was a fantastic episode. And I think it, it has our record, had our record numbers of, uh, of downloads and listens to date. <laughs> now, don't be smug. Come on, don't be smug. <laughs> it's, it's because I said at the beginning it would probably be the least successful. So it's quite amusing. <laughs> <laughs> no, it did, it did, it did. Um. So yeah, I can't even remember why I wasn't there. I have no idea where I am. I, I've been it's been a whirlwind recently. And I was I was actually in Paris this week um looking at a car that I once again can't talk about just yet. But I was chatting to a colleague of ours from another publication, the lovely Jordan from Auto Express, and we were both saying that we've never known a period with so much and so many launches and new cars happening. I don't know about you two, it's it's busy, isn't it? Really busy at the minute. It is. It comes in fits and starts, doesn't it? I, I, I got this theory that this is the kind of the ghost of the Geneva Motor Show because people used to launch stuff at Geneva Motor Show. And yeah. even yeah. if they're not there, they've still got like a three or six year cycle on those cars and they just naturally occur now. I think that's my theory anyway. It's, it's a good theory. It's a good theory. So what have you all been, what have you both been driving this week? What have you been in? Uh, well, I've, I've been having some fun, I must admit. Oh, oh, go on. <laughs> well, I, I'm very jealous. I, I went down to um, uh, Goodwood where they have a media day, and it's kind of a, a, a kind of a taster before the, the Festival of Speed. And there were uh, lots of cars there that were nice. I went down there to drive something called a Yang Wang U8, uh, which, as regular readers and listeners will know, is a completely barking mad off-roader 4x4, sort of 150,000 pounds worth. Um, but they, I looked at the list of the other cars there and went, ooh, some quite nice stuff here. But the, the Yang Wang first, it is uh, a big 4 by 4 It looks like a Land Rover Defender. Um, interior is more luxurious than a Range Rover. And it has mm. four motors, one for each wheel. And each motor is more powerful than you'd get in the new uh, ID5 GTX. So it's like 300 horsepower per oh. wheel. I mean, it's nuts. No. That's insane. So, so are they selling this already in China? Yeah. So this is a car that you can buy in China. I, I, I just assumed that this is all concept car and it's all pie in the sky. They're not actually going to make it. And they said, no, we yeah. sold 1,500 in China and it's sold out for the next two years or something. And I'm like, oh, my God. So it's 1,200 horsepower <laughs> in a car that weighs 3.4 tonnes. Wow. If you put oh us three God. in the car, you'd need a special license to be able to drive it. <laughs> it would be, be overweight. It would be technically a, a commercial vehicle. Um, and you can imagine what this is like. I mean, it's absolutely insane. So it does 1,200 horsepower, 0 to 16, 3.6 seconds, I think. So if yeah. you can imagine that in something that big and that heavy, it's also amphibious. So you can drive it in water, but only for half an hour. So it's for emergency use because then oh. you have to have it checked by a dealer. So if you get caught in a flood or something... You won't die, and it will it will puddle along, you know, it'll puddle along. Um, but I drove if, it. If you want to, so if listeners do want to see that car, if you haven't already, if you go over to uh, Electrifying Com on on Twitter or X or whatever we 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 call it, that place, there's a video on there that you took, um, and we're going to get a YouTube shot up as well because it it's nuts to see, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it does this tank turn, so the, the wheels are on on one side go one way on the other side they go the other way so it twists around which is insane as well but i mean to drive it i thought this is i had no idea what it's going to be like and it's like nothing i've ever driven before because you you go into a corner and bearing in mind this is on a circuit and goodwood was well which is a fast circuit and it's going and it's trying all the motors are trying to get you around the corner and the tires are just being tortured because of physics you know three and a half tons um but the funniest part was like oh there's a lamborghini behind you you need to like 
indicate to the right and move over to the right. So you do that, you move over to the right. A Lamborghini goes I'll pass you on the on the bend. And then there's a straight and you plant the throttle and you catch the Lamborghini again. And they're looking in their mirror going, What? There's, there's something like a defender bearing down on me. It's absolutely crazy. I'm not sure the world needs it. Did you ask the question why? Why they felt the need to design and develop a vehicle that can perform tank turns. I mean, it's an amazing party trick and it looks great when you see it. Um, why it needs to float on water half an hour? Is there, is there a why or is it just because it can? I think it's just because it can. Apparently the, the, the big boss bloke is an engineer and he likes to do these things that look impressive and and capture the attention of the world which it's done so he's land yeah. rover there's mercedes all with g vogans and defenders not doing them electric and he's come along and gone look i can yeah. do this and we're all talking about it so it's quite clever we'll talk indeed but, but but let's just stay with goodwood for a moment shall mm. we because news has reached me that we have a car thief on the podcast in yeah. our midst yeah. somebody somebody tom went off in a Rolls Royce Spectre <laughs> and and perhaps didn't bring it back quite as quickly as the nice people from the Rolls Royce PR team would have liked. So they, they kind of thought that you liked it so much you decided to keep it. And and then when I spoke to you about it at the end of the day yesterday, you were like, but yeah, well, I did really like it and I really want one now. And that's not the way to go about it. If you want one, you have to try and save up your pennies and buy one and you can't steal them, okay? Yes, I understand. Okay. So... It- <laughs> What, they said, oh, it's a good it's, car, though, isn't it? Oh, it's it's a steel-worthy car. I, I, it's Yeah, I'm glad you've had the chance to drive that because I, I loved it. I drove it on the launch last year, and I honestly don't know why you would go back to uh, a Rolls-Royce with an internal combustion engine because doesn't it suit electric? It does so much. I was asking them about... Uh, do these do these people fast the owners do they fast charge it are they bored about that they said no 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 they charge it at home they have on average six other cars and yeah. each Rolls Royce Spectre does an average of six thousand kilometers a year so uh, what's that sort of five thousand miles I suppose isn't it and they'll just charge it home from their solar panels which also you know warm their pool or something I assume um, <laughs> and they swan around but it's quite a thing I did feel it's ex- it's yeah. extraordinary, and you, you probably didn't see it at night. Well, you can see full advantage of that the, the the starlight headliner, which is just all those little tiny, tiny, tiny LEDs that are in individual perforations, and it's it's quite beautiful, isn't it? The whole thing, and incredibly comfy, as you'd expect a Rolls Royce to be. Yeah, I mean the the, the option like the, that that headliner, for example, you can have it in the same star pattern that was visible from when your child was born or something. I know. (laughs) I know. It's nuts, isn't it? The day that you proposed to your partner, you could buy them the car and choose the the constellation pattern from that night. (laughs) It's gorgeous. And I think the nearest we will get to owning one, Tom, is stealing one. Yeah. Well, I I got lost. That was my excuse. I got a bit lost. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Let's (laughs) move on now. Sorry, Tom. We're not having that. (laughs) Mike, have you stolen anything this week? Oh no! I, I think I'm the only one on this podcast keeping it real. I'm the only one of the not not Rolls Royce driving uh, presenters. But I, I had a um, had a Megane um, E Tech Megane E Tech, was one, which I went back on Monday. So that that was nice. I hadn't really done any proper miles in that, and um, mm-hmm. we did the podcast last week, and then just sort of picked it up and driven it here. So it was, I was really really impressed. We had a bit of a charging nightmare, and so much as I think the charger that we plugged it into where we were filming slightly spooked it. And um, it meant that we couldn't we couldn't get any charge into it, even on the granny charger. So we were a bit worried for a bit. But um, we did the old, you know, good old fashioned switch everything off, switch everything back on again, and I went for a little drive and came back, and everything was uh, was fine and never never yeah. missed a beat since. But it was a it's a really nice car. I, mean, I forgot we drove Tom and I, you and I drove that and left hand drive form a long time mm. ago, didn't we? Mm. When it, we had it for a few hours, I think, very early on, and um, didn't really get a good go at it. Yeah, yeah it's good. You've driven as well, Jen, we- haven't you? Yeah, we've got a triple test coming soon to the site, uh, to the site, to the website, uh, to YouTube and the website. Sorry, what am I talking about today? Everywhere. To our YouTube channel, everywhere. It'll be all over the place. Um, a triple test involving that car, um, and that will be dropping pretty soon. And yeah, it'll be interesting. Um, I think you will find the result of that one quite interesting. Should we stay with French cars though for a bit? And should we talk about yes. the Dacia? Yes, story. Yes, bring- absolutely. 
Dacha Spring. So I came back from a bit of time in that car when we did the first look video and I was saying, it's going to start, it's going to be 15, 15. And, and I think you were like, really, it can't be, let's, let's just put 15 and a half. I was like, I think it's going to be 15. Yeah. It was actually, it starts with a 14, 14,995 for the spring. It has been confirmed this week. And that set our socials alight with lots of comments. Um, And I think the biggest, you know, people are saying stuff like, you know, it's not got enough range and is it you, you know, is it actually going to be practical? But actually, Mike, you and I were chatting and we were talking about the numbers of people in the UK that have second cars as well. There are 2 million households in the UK that have a second car. When you consider that on average as well, the, the average journey times distances in the UK are 20 miles a day we drive in our cars. The Dacia Spring with its, you know, it's going to be what, 120 miles. It's The official range is 132, I think. So, you know, it'll be in winter, you'll be getting sub 100, yeah. at, you know, at least, at the, at the most rather. And But I think for so many people, that will actually be enough. This is a car that you will top up often. You will plug it in at night. Um, you'll, you know, if you if you've got a charger nearby, you'll just be topping it up often. Um, and I think for so many people, that will allow them to get into electric driving, which is a brilliant thing. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think of the pricing? Do you think it? I, I think it's about right for what it is. Yeah, I, I think it's it's great. It's a surprise and a, a pleasant surprise that it it starts with the fourteen. Yeah. Um, but my question, as always, because I, I look on our marketplace for the used car prices, etc., would you have that, or would you have a delivery mileage pre-registered Fiat 500 at fourteen thousand eight hundred? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly, and and it is, and it is that. But there is still for a lot of people that want a new car, yeah. and want to, you know, and, and also want to buy it on finance on monthlies as well. So, yeah. you know, it's still an option for so many people. Yeah, I Mike. think the yeah, I think you know, we, I was looking at all the comments coming through, and they, and they were great, and they kind of basically fell into two camps. Really, there were people saying this is great, Dacia aren't going to be able to make those fast enough because they're going to be a huge, huge seller. To other people saying, I'm not entirely sure who this is for. It wouldn't work for me, and it wouldn't work for my parents. It wouldn't work for anyone else that I know. But it's 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 tricky to me, and you can, we always say, well, it's and a lot of people said, well, it's 14 grand if it only had uh, a bigger battery and faster charging. Well, you know, yeah. I, I, kind of, I kind of wish this job had twice the pay and half the hours, but that's not going to happen <laughs> either. So it's um, it, it 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 is what it is, and I think you're right. There's a lot of cachet involved with buying a new car. It is a you know, it, it's a treat. I've done it once, and I, I you know, and it was the most amazing experience because it, you, your name is the first one on the V5, and it's it's great, isn't it? It's like the day you get the mortgage for your house or something, you know, whatever. It's it's yeah, it's, yeah. it's a lovely thing, and to make it, and it'd be interesting what the monthlies are because, as Tom says, there's a lot of brands who are let's be honest, it's struggling to shift the volume of cars that perhaps they anticipated. So where well, you've got um, what used to be the Funky Cat, now called the very memorable O3. I mean, that's a hundred and something quid a month, isn't it, Tom, on a, on a PCP? Yeah. Really um, cheap. So I, you kind of hope that Dacia can kind of get competitive with that because if they're kind of 250, 300 a month, then it's a no-brainer, isn't it? But um, yeah, I mean, there's still a few kind of hurdles to go, but it's hugely <laughs> encouraging that we've got a car that cheap. Hugely encouraging, and actually, the quality um, was definitely, you know, up on that car when I mm. went to see it. You can see that they've—it's a real step up from that previous model, which it, it needed to be. Yeah. And I think what this has sort of got me thinking is how well the French and and Renault, in particular, Renault Group, are doing at the moment with electric cars. They're just yeah. absolutely knocking it out of the park, aren't they? So as you said, we had the Megane impressed us all. You know, we've really liked that car. Nicola has just been off to drive the Scenic. Um, yeah. So that's, you know, made a return. Um, that was one of the first cars I reviewed. And there's loads of videos of me on YouTube with old variations of Scenics. And I actually remember um, in- interviewing with a fringe and shoulder pants, yeah. Um, interviewing Patrick de Quemon, who, if you remember him, who was the Renault designer yeah. who first penned it and talking to him about it. And I, I think that's on there as well somewhere. So I've got a soft spot for that car. And Nicola came back and has been absolutely raving about it. So the video is here on YouTube. If you haven't checked it out already, make sure you do. And there's a full review over at electrifying.com. And it makes you wonder about the Peugeot E3008, which mm. is, according to Nick, she just thinks it, you know, nice car, drives really nicely. 
and massively undercuts it on price as well. So, but they're doing that. They've said the the uh, Megan's great, and then we've got the Renault Five, which is. Yeah. You know, that brilliant invention, reinvention of a car that we love. They are doing some really interesting, extraordinary stuff, aren't they, Renault, at the moment? And you've got the Renault 4 coming up as well, and the mm-hmm. Citroen EC3 as well. I mean, they're all going to be coming this year, aren't they? Um, I think the 4 will probably be towards the end of the year if, if it's going to come this year. But the pipeline for French electric cars is astonishing, isn't it? They've really ramped everything up. Well, what I was going to say, the... Um... The Dacia Spring, I think, and to a certain extent, the Renault 5 and that Citroen, they're going to be great station cars. So if you've got a family car and you don't want to take it to the station and you don't know if you can fit it in that that parking spot, you just imagine that's the car you take to the station every day. Well, that's the the car you take to work every day. That's fine. And then you've got a big family car for the rest of the time. Uh, That's when it's, that's its kind of sweet spot, I think. And that's where it's going to be. There will be station car parks full of springs and Citroen EC3s. Yeah. Yeah. And and I have loads of older people living in our in our village who have relatively small cars now, and they're and all they're ever doing is run arounds to the shops, or you know they're retired. Actually, something like the Spring again for that is going to be absolutely ideal for that, because yeah. it is finally we're getting somewhere with price. But yeah, I think I think Vive la Revolution when it comes to French cars at the moment, particularly yeah. electric ones, and particularly Renault who um, also are designing cars that look really nice as well, with some really nice features in them. Their design team is doing some fantastic stuff. So, yeah. yeah all good. So have we decided who's going to drive the Renault 5 when it comes out? Well, well I think we know who's going to do drive that? that. It's going to be you, isn't it, Jenny? <laughs> you, I don't you'll, know. you'll say something about Oh, I don't know. The algorithm, <laughs> yeah. The algorithm, because I didn't know them. I, 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 I feel like we should ask if we can take a group of us. Yeah. Like, could we have a road trip and all go along to do it? We've got it's this one idea. of those cars. We, that- yeah, we've got this idea for a feature and we need three different colours. So can we have three of them? Yes. <laughs> yes. yes, we've got to try and find that. I, 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 I literally can't wait. But also the spring, also really want to drive that. Um, anyway, so yeah, that was my, that's the cars that caught my eye um, this week. Um, I've been in an NEX30, actually. I've been driving that quite a bit. And I don't think the... Um, I know that you two potentially aren't quite aren't fans necessarily of the um, of the infotainment, everything being in that central screen. I've, I've actually got along with that okay. Um, I've had a few charging niggles, though, which has bothered me a bit more than that. And also, it does need it does need the CarPlay, um, mm. doesn't it? Which car, the CarPlay over the air update's coming in the summer. Have customers got um, them now? Is there going to be anybody out there who's a listener who can tell us if they've taken some- one? So they are customers have them. There is one that I drive past quite regularly in that amazing yellow colour, and it looks lovely. And it's parked yeah. outside somebody's house, not far from me, okay. uh, in Oxfordshire. So yeah. there, I, I presume there are customers who have got them. Well, if there's anyone out there who's got one, let, let us know what you think of it, because I think the ones we've yes. had, which are obviously the very early cars that are their demonstrators, have had a couple of niggles. So I, I don't know if those have made it to the customer cars too. I'd be interested to know. Yeah, please do. And as always, do let us know if you have any questions or comments. If you're listening on your usual um, podcast streaming service, you can email us info at electrifying.com. Um, and if you're here on YouTube, just stick it in the comments below. Or you can email us as well if you want to do. But we do read yeah. the comments. Well, Mike does anyway, Postman Mike. And we'll be having his post back a little later. But Mike, what about what's caught your eye in the news world this week? Well, this week we've had Volkswagen unveil the GTI that isn't the GTI, because um, as we know, they oh, God, um, yeah. Volkswagen, Volkswagen like to keep their sporting What's drums. that all about? I know, I, I don't know. But I mean, I, I would have said before that they like to keep their sporting brands separate, and so much as GTX is always going to be the sporty electric ones. But you, last, uh, last year, you went to go and see the ID, ID2 GTI, so that kind of uh, puts that theory. I, I mean, to, to be fair to Volkswagen, they are in the process of kind of welding together the electric car and the, the, the internal combustion engine car. So they won't be this kind of ID separation that we've had before. But this week they, we've seen the ID3 GTX and we've seen the ID7 GTX. Um, now, both of these have got the new drive, APP 550, the boring name, is, is the new drive system that is across the entire Volkswagen group. So 545 Newton meters of torque. Um, and in the power for the, the ID3 GTX, you've got 322 brake horsepower rear wheel drive. So it's it's the kind of Volkswagen version of the Cupra uh, VZ that Tom mentioned the other week. So that's a lot of power. That's going to be quite punchy. 
Um, so I mean, they, they're very subtle in terms of looks. They don't really look that much different to the uh, to the normal ID3 and normal ID7. But um, the wagon, the ID7 Tourer, sounds quite nice. You know, I think that's that's certainly mm. had the most interest on on Twitter or X or whatever. Um, in terms of sort of feedback, I think people really like the idea of a fast wagon, don't they? So mm. yeah, Ooh, so that's yeah, caught, that's, absolutely. That's, that's, I mean, that's only caught my eye, definitely. Yeah, but I do think they're really confusing people. Because you ask most people what they think a GTX is, and you're not thinking sporty Volkswagen, are you? You're really not. Yeah, <laughs> you and I are in an era where GTX means Castrol GTX. Yes, it does mean Castrol not. GTX. That's exactly yeah. what it means to me, which is completely the wrong thing for them and not what they want people to be thinking about. And I think it will be much easier for them, and I think it's the right decision because the ID names will go down the line, won't they? And eventually it will just yeah. be, you know, there's familiar marks that we know. And I think that's why I think Renault have been so good with, with the Renault 5. You know, it's, it's a car that everybody loves. They've reinvented it as electric. Yes, it's probably been easier for them because it is only electric. Um, but many have managed to do it. Many have somehow managed to bridge that gap between building combustion engine versions and electric. And it's not gone a bit sort of bit weird and confusing. Um, and, you know, I don't know. I, I just I think it will be it will be easier for them. I think when the ID brand goes, I think we all agree that it's not been a massive success yeah. for them, has it, in terms of brand recognition? Uh, I, I always thought that the GTX would refer to four wheel drive performance exactly cars. i think that was the original plan and then this yeah. id3 has got two-wheel drive so that should have been a gti yeah, i'm confused i think there was talk originally wasn't there 2019 that they Volkswagen said well you know that that smaller version of the platform can be made into four-wheel drive because it's basically it's most of the chunks of the id4 and id5 isn't it but mm -hmm. i think there was, there was a cost implication i think it was made as rear-wheel drive but could potentially be so Obviously, they've looked at the sums and thought, well, it ain't going to work. And there's no point giving the small one a different badge to the other ones. Let's just try and sort of forget that X is all-wheel drive and, and go with that. So I think it would only bother nerds like us, I suspect. Mm. Mm. Um, anything else we want to, to slip in before we head to the post bag and the car buying conundrums? Um, Rivian have shown, um, yeah. Rivian seem to have invented the Mark 1 Golf GTI. Uh, <laughs> uh, the R3 and the R2, which are supposed to be the smaller, more European-friendly versions of, uh, oh. of Rivian's great big um, car. So if you have a look on the site, see what you think of that. But it is very much the side profile of the R3. Does it like a Mark I? Uh, it does. I'm, I think it looks brilliant. <laughs> I absolutely love it. I really, really think it looks fantastic. And I do... I just hope that we finally get to see their cars here in the UK. I'm sort of sick of saying, it yeah. sounds like they're, they're in talks with the government to potentially build a factory here. Oh, no, it's definitely, not, that's not happening now, but they are going to come next year. I mean, I just hope they get some cars over here because, I, yeah. you know, I, I really love their cars. I think they look brilliant. And I think the R3 does look fantastic. Yeah. Does look good, doesn't it? So, um, yeah. I'm mean, interested to see what, what, what listeners think. Have you had a look at it on the site and see... Uh, is that the kind of thing that would work for you? And it's, it's a strange one, isn't it? Because you look at the size of that, you think, oh, that's quite a nice little small car. And you would look at the dimensions. It's enormous. It's the size of an Enyaq when you actually look at the I dimensions know. of it. But it looks quite sort of small and compact in the pictures. It does look compact. I just think it looks great. And I do, you know, like we, we kind of were all a bit sniffy about the whole um, build your dreams, the BYD thing across the back. Yeah. Um, I think sometimes logos do look great. And the way they've got just Rivian, you know, it's just stretched across the back under that fantastic uh, rear light bar that just goes um, across the, the rear of the car. Yeah. I think it looks great. I really do. I'm, I'm, nice. I'm hoping to try and get to see it. I'm desperately, I'm in, I'm in New York the week after next for World Car of the Year announcements. And I, I'm desperately like in, in contact mm. with the, the Rivian PR team. So Rivian PR team, if you're listening, yes, you really do want to get a car for me to have a look at in New York. I'm, I'm begging them. So it'd be nice to actually see it and see if it looks as cool as it does in the pictures. Yeah, be good. It is. So should we do post bag? How's the post bag looking this week, Mike? Have we had lots of fabulous, fabulous comments and, and questions? Amazing. I can't thank you all enough for listening and um, putting your comments in, whether you like stuff, don't like stuff, whether you've got car buying queries or stories that you've done. Please continue because they, they obviously make our week when you read those. They're really good. I've got two car buying um, conundrums for you this week. Do you know, I've got one okay. easy one and one slightly trickier one. I'm going to start with the okay. easy one. 
I'll take the ne- easy one. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, you'll see why I'll direct the easy one to you. As Nev Brownlee says, I um, suspect this will be the dullest question you've ever been asked at Electrify. <laughs> The, the bar's mm, pretty low for that. that. So, um, <laughs> um, I love Ginny's video on the Renault 5. But I'd like to know if there are any door pockets in the rear. I ask because I like the look of both the Renault 5 and the Fiat 600e, mm. but disappointing the Fiat has nothing at all for rear passengers except the map pocket. Do you know if it has door pockets, the Renault 5? Uh, we hand over now to our Renault 5 correspondent, Ginny Buckley. I'm afraid to report that it doesn't have, <laughs> uh, it just has the rear pockets on the back of the seats. But please don't let that put you off because you could just shove your bottle in that. It would absolutely fit because it is such a fabulous car. Obviously, we say that with the caveat of having not driven it yet. But in terms of just the package and just what it looks like and all the the thought they've put into it, I think it is a lot of car for the money. So I'm sure that if we go onto Amazon, we can find you some kind of clip that will clip onto the back of that pocket that you could yes. put your water bottle in. Could the baguette so hold first. a I will come... Is what Tom? Could the baguette hold a work? Could you have one of those yeah, and on the, on the back else? and then put a bottle of Evian in it or something? Absolutely, there will be. I, 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 for the next podcast, I'm for Nev. I'm going to try and find a solution for that because I, I, I feel so strongly that I don't want the lack of a of somewhere to put his water bottle, um, be a blocker for 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 the love that he may have for the Renault Five because it's such a nice car. You know, what? Okay, we'll to, leave we'll that have... one with me. I will report back. That's it. Handing over to the studio. This is Ginny Buckley, live from the Renault Five event. <laughs> there we go. We'll have to get Nev on this um, group test with us. He'll have to come out with us as well with his little yes, bottle of water will. to make sure he's, he's happy with it. So um, the second one, right? This is trickier. Yeah. Um, Pete Hollyhead, right? Currently got a Kia Sorento two point two D, which is a big old, a big old bus. Um, to tow over a caravan of 1,613. This precise number is important, and I'll get onto that later. Uh, I'd like to go electric. Um, I'm aware I'm not going to get a great range on it, um, but I'm looking for electric tow cars with capacities over or above uh, 1,613. Um, if he's trying to get it underneath, I don't really understand caravans terribly well, so forgive me for this. He's trying to get it under 1,600 kilos, so, he, so, he's, so his market's a lot bigger, and if he can get it under that, he will get it an EV6, which is his car of choice. But if he can't, what should he choose? He'll need a car that's kind of got a towing capacity up to, you know, 1,800 kilos, which is kind of the next the next one up, really. So um, he said, he's, look, the EV9 is too expensive. Um, 65, 60 k yeah, is about his limit. Because they do, the air, the EV9 air is kind of on that price. But it is. you need the dual motor version to get the higher towing capacity isn't that isn't that it's two and a half thousand isn't it two and a half thousand kilograms the the um the, it, for the, the all-wheel the drive one yes yeah, yes yeah. exactly but the other one the, what does the, the what does the air is the air i can't remember of how much it's about 800 air. 900 it's way oh, off it is? yeah it's That's really not shame. much at all it's such a shame because it's a great car there are yes there are a few options pete um and i kind of did, ran some sums earlier today and sort of worked out which ones mm-hmm. um there would be um my personal choice would I'd like the Volvo EX40 uh, recharge. Uh, it would feel quite a little bit more compact, feel like a drawing room compared to your um, Sorento, which is enormous. I'd appreciate that. But so, but that has a towing capacity of 1800 if you go for the dual motor version, and that's 53,800 for the absolute top spec with all the whistles and bells in it. So you wouldn't okay. be lacking for kit. Um, but I, I suspect I might be the only one who really likes that car. I just think it's ridiculously quick. It won't be with a pilot. Well, it won't be true. That is a, yes. that, that's a very good point to make, actually. <laughs> I think what both you and I, Tom, had slight issues. We didn't love the car. We didn't love the ride on it. And also, it, it's just it's got such urgent acceleration. It just feels a bit disproportionate to the fact that this is actually just a nice it's sort of family car. Fam- yeah, family car. The, the, the new version where they where they put the engine at the back on for the two-wheel drive version so i've driven that one and i thought that was a lot better so i don't know haven't driven the four-wheel drive on maybe it's not quite so crazy now i thought it was much okay. improved in that version but uh also the in- but yes the, the inside was feeling a bit old maybe and it's moving so yeah. fast this market isn't it it's just you know you see a it screen is. that's that big and now it's like oh it feels a bit old <laughs> yeah okay, okay. Well, okay. what choice. next what's your other what's in the other suggestions uh, well, uh, Tom's going to come up with the next suggestion because okay. he put well, yeah. this in the hat and I thought it was a valid one. Yeah, well, uh, the Genesis GV70 electric. Oh, uh, well, I know, really? I know. But I've, <laughs> I have actually towed with one. I towed a horse box 
on a um, on a test track and tried it out on sort of slippery <laughs> conditions and things, and it worked really well. It towed beautifully. So I know you mm-hmm. think the interior is a bit chintzy, but uh, I, I as a towing car, it was great. I just I, I've just been in for I've just been out in Nicola's. Um... Uh, Genesis, her GV, uh, GV, well, she got GV60. And, um, oh, I just don't love the inside. I just, just like, I feel like I need sunglasses or, you know, to kind of like put some covers over some of it because it's just so much going on in there. And look, maybe it is your thing. You really like loads of switches and buttons and I can't, you know, deny (laughs) that it's luxurious and comfortable. I just don't massively love the interior personally. And that is where you're going to be sitting all the time. So I would perhaps think carefully about, about that one. That's my, my take on that. Sorry. Go on next. Any other All options? Right. Well, okay. Then little miss negative. What do you, what do you reckon? I've <laughs> got the only, the only one left on my list is the Audi Q8 each one. Now uh, don't jump at me because Ooh. I know this is over budget to start with, but okay. checked on it this morning. It's currently a seven and a half grand uh, discount uh, dealer contribution. They like to call it, don't they? But it's, it's basically off the list price if you're putting it on a PCP. So, so that puts it under the. It puts it around sort of sixty-two grand, which is probably just on the top of its haggling distance of your top budget. But um, would you go for that? Would that be your choice, Jenny? I think it would be my choice out of those three, but it is a little bit more. And I know that at one point the EQA was was potentially in the running, wasn't it? Because yeah. it, it, it. But I think we all agree that they're not. The Mercedes are not. It's not the best, is it? Really. It's all right, but I'm not sure with any, with my hand on my heart, I could recommend the Mercedes EQA to anyone. I just don't mm. think it's a good enough electric car. I think it's got some quite fundamental flaws. Um, I would, I think out of all those, if you can do some serious haggling, the Q8 is yeah. definitely the one that I would be going for. Is it? Well, how how long until the Q6 is out? That would probably be even better. Yeah, that probably yeah. would be. If you yeah. Yes, that is a very good point. Q6, we can't talk. Car. We can't talk about that car yet, but we will be able to talk about it in a week or so. <laughs> so, yeah. actually, hold the line, caller. <laughs> no, yeah. We'll come back. We'll, we'll circle back on this one when we can talk to you about another Audi that might be coming that might actually be quite an interesting option for you. Yeah. Well, I'd yeah. So don't, don't, go, don't, that's, don't go. That's that's not. I can talk about. No, that. you can talk about that. Go on then. And, and it was great. I mean, I, I just thought it had. Um, it, it had a, the right sort of power that you need for that car. It seemed to be very efficient, had a big enough battery mm. um, and uh, had lovely steering, which is a very geeky thing to say, but I just, it's, it was most un Audi like for that. Um, so uh, I'd much rather have that than a Q8. And I think if you bought a Q8 and then you saw a Q6 or drove a Q6, you'd feel a bit mm. silly. So wait for that. Okay. And the maximum towing capacity on that's going to be somewhere between two to two and a half um, to two two thousand to two thousand five hundred kilograms. Wow, that'd be good. Mm, that'd yeah. be good. So just hang fire for a while, and we might be able to yeah. talk about that mm. fairly yeah. soon. Come back soon, Pete. Okay, we'll give more some more advice. Um, right, I'm just going to rattle through, if it's okay with okay. you, a few a few little comments that we had from yes. from the post bag. Um, on the subject last last week, we had the most bizarre um shortlist for buying a car, Ginny. There's a um a chap whose name escapes me. His, his, the two cars he was with, it was an ex-dealer demonstrator, MGZ, ZS, not ZS, ZS, SZ, come on, um, and a 2017 Tesla Model X, which were the same mm-hmm. price. They were both about 24 grand. Um, and we, we wondered if there was anyone out there that still had free supercharging. Remember, that was a thing when Model X and yep. Model S came out. Not only is, are there a few people out there, there are two people who listen to the podcast who bothered to message us as well. So Neil Leet says I've got a 2017 Model X with free supercharging still and a CCS upgrade. He's had it from new best car he's owned. Um, he can't Brilliant. bear to part with it because there's nothing else to good tempt, him, tempt him out of it. And the man with no name says, yes, I have. <laughs> uh, that's his name. I'm not disguising it. I have a 2017 Model S with free supercharging. I also have an adapter from Tesla to be allowed. To, so I'm able to use CCS and another one for Chadamo. Oh, he's got the best brilliant. of both worlds, hasn't he? Yeah, brilliant. So it's more flex charging is more flexible than others. So thank you both for mentioning that. I didn't realize there were so many people out there still had uh, free supercharging. And on the quickly on the subject of um, NCAP telling people telling manufacturers to put buttons back into cars, 
Uh, three, three comments on that. Pottery for Life said, I find it odd that some car manufacturers willfully add driving distraction by putting all the controls into an iPad or tablet. Fair enough. Neil Bassett also says, great episode, guys. So pleased buttons are coming back. Touching screens while driving is dangerous. Simple as that. But on the on the other side of the argument, Obi Paddles probably agrees with you, Ginny. Says, I disagree with all the comments about buttons. We have a Tesla and key things like wipers have stalks, now buttons. Um, Because of the profiles, pretty much every setting is personalized to my requirements every time I get in the car. So horses for courses, isn't it? Buttons work for something. Do you know what? It's such a personal thing. It really is. Hmm. And, you know, it's just whatever you're, you know, it's, it's, it's down to the individual, you know, isn't it? I, I didn't personally like the fact that on the, the Model 3 now you don't have an indicator stalk, it's there's buttons. Other people, it doesn't bother. It doesn't bother them. It's, it's, you know, this is why it's wonderful because we're all so different. We all have different opinions and we get to hear them all on the kilowatt half hour. We do. And on that note, I think yes. we have to wrap it up because as always, it is the right, kilowatt uh, half hour and a little bit. <laughs> um, but thanks again for all your questions, all your car buying conundrums. Please do keep them coming. Um, and please, if you are listening on one of your streaming services, do like and follow us because that really helps um, build the audience for this podcast, which is what we want to do so we can keep on making it. And if you aren't already subscribed to our YouTube channel and you've just kind of stumbled across this podcast by accident, again, please do make sure that you subscribe to the channel and switch your notifications on. And on that note, I will say from me, Ginny, it is goodbye. See you next time. See you next time. Bye. Bye, everyone.